Um, what should we do? Um, let's just for a moment think about diffusion and leakage. And um, these are two different ways that we can get water moving through our structures. Um, diffusion, leakage, first of all, is when if we if air is moving out of the house through the walls in the winter, uh, this is called leakage. Um, and moisture can pass through the materials. Um, this is called diffusion. So when we're building a building, we can kind of think of um, maybe four different ways of doing things. Um, we could have a very highly airtight building with very low diffusion. Um, so it doesn't let any air through at all and doesn't let any moisture through at all. Uh, we could have a very airtight building that doesn't let air through, but it's open to, to moisture, so moisture can get through the walls. Uh, we could have a very low airtight building and a very high diffusion building, so basically completely open, um, air can go through freely, moisture can go through freely. Or we could ha try and have a building that has air moving through freely, um, but not moisture. I think the last one probably is is impossible but it is possible to have air tightness without diffusion so we can have substances that will stop air getting through but moisture will get through um, and we can think about airtight or or less airtight um, and let's just think about which one of these we would want in our ideal building um, so walls or material properties there are some different properties of walls that we need to think about. Thermal conductivity is how much heat will go through the wall. Air tightness is how much air gets through the wall. And um, permeance or vapour permeability is how much moisture can get through the walls. And um, none of these are zero. So as we know... Um, thermal conductivity usually we use a u value and there are no buildings there are no materials with a u value of zero we can try and get it as low as possible um, but usually um, if you want more insulation you're going to have to make the walls thicker there are new materials there are new insulation materials all the time and they are getting better but they're not going to be zero um, air tightness as well. We can make buildings very, very airtight, um, but then they're, they're never really going to be a hundred percent airtight. There'll always be somewhere where air is leaking out. It may be very slow, maybe a very small amount. And also, um, nothing is completely watertight. Things can be very high level. Um, I'm drinking from this cup. And water's going to take a very long time to get through this cup. It will evaporate before it leaks through the cup. Um, so the materials we use for buildings, they can be very, very close to zero, but, but no materials are quite at zero. Um, the measurement for water tightness or for the permeance, the vapour permeance, is usually um, a perm. Um, and the metric perm is a gram of water, a gram of water vapour per day, per square metre, um, per millimetre of mercury. So that's a pressure difference in vapour pressure between inside and outside. Um, and if there's more vapour pressure difference, there'll be more moisture will go through. Uh, this is not a lot. So an important thing to remember is that a lot more air can move, a lot more water can move in the air than the water will move through a material. So if you have air going through a wall, that's a much bigger risk for moisture than water that's in the wall moving through the wall as vapour. Um, these are other units. There's a different unit in Germany and there's a different unit in the US. 
Um, and you have to be careful because a lot of the research on this has been done in Germany and in the US. So when you're looking at these units, you need to know uh, which unit, which country's unit is it. Um, so beware. So you need to um, add a vapour barrier. Um, if it's airtight, then that's good. That will stop air going through. But you've still got a risk of vapour movement going through your wall. So this barrier here needs to stop vapour as well as stopping air. Um, and this is great for the winter. So you need to keep your wall nice and tight. Um, stop the air getting through. Stop water vapour getting through. Everything should be fine. Until um, the summer, now if it's hot and humid outside, you've got the vapour wanting to go in the other direction. And this is bad news. Now, what you would ideally have is a wall that starts to open up when it needs to in the summer. And if it opens up, you can then start the vapour escaping into the house and stopping any build up inside the walls and um, luckily there are materials that do this um, so these are various materials looking at the relative humidity along the bottom and um, the perm the vapor permeants going up so generally um, as things get more humid many materials start to get more vapor open and there are some um, special what are called um, intelligent membranes and what they will do is when it's low humidity um, in the winter they will close and stop any moisture getting through um, and when the humidity gets higher in the summer, they will open up and start allowing the wall um, to escape the vapour. Um, and this will usually dry into the house um, in the summer. Um, so, how do you get condensation then? Uh, well, the, the simple answer is... Um, if you have a building that's airtight and not insulated, then you will get insulation from cold spots on the wall um, in the winter. Um, if it's insulated and not airtight, if air is allowed to go through um, in the wrong direction, then you will get um, you'll get humidity turning to condensation inside the walls. Um, this can happen um, at some point there's going to be different pressure inside and outside and at some point probably you'll have um, air moving through the walls if they're not airtight so having airtight walls um, is very important having insulated walls is very important um, but a little insulation is a dangerous thing so when we start to make buildings with insulation, we need to make sure that we've worked out everything and that it, otherwise it won't work. And when, and as we saw before with um, builders being very conservative, if builders, if there's a mistake, then builders won't do that again. Um, so the big problems we have then in the walls is um, stop water getting in. And we could just build a wall that 100% keeps water out of the wall. Um, and this seems like a good idea in theory. Um, but in practice, we can't really guarantee that no water will get in. At some point, there may, there may be some water when it's being built in there to begin with. And if you make a wall that doesn't allow any more, any water to move... If it starts off with water inside, then you're in trouble. Um, so it's probably a good idea to also let water out. Um, and you need to think about which way the water is going to move so that it can get out. Um, wetting is 
generally by air leakage. So the biggest threat of moisture is by air coming into your walls. Um, humid air carries a lot of moisture. And drying is by diffusion. So walls will dry out by moisture going through the walls. Um, and the humidity is going to be less than 100%. So the moisture, the vapour pressure will push it in one direction and it will dry out that way. Um, you need to make sure it's going to dry faster than it wets. Otherwise, you're in trouble. So I think the ideal wall then will stop air from getting in, but it will allow moisture to get out one way or another. Um, that's all. I have a few references. Um, thank you to uh, Anne Cotts, who wrote about mould, wood, mould and Japanese architecture. And um, here are the other references. And thank you for the drawings. And um, that is all.